how, how come you've actually stayed with it for the last five or six years? Because I believe in it in a way. I mean, punk rock has gone on now for six years. And there must be something there to still keep it alive, which I must see all these bands. I mean, despite all your doubts, then, what, what is it that you actually believe in? What's the thing that you to it still? I believe that things still can be changed. Because I think that most people tend to say, oh, yeah, punk rock, that's gone, that died with the Sex Pistols, yak, yak. I don't think that's true. I think that... Well, I say that it's... Uh... Sure. I can't. I think that punk rock now is stronger than it ever was. And there's... M not more demand, but... Well, more reason for it. Yeah. Like... Everything, like at the moment, seems to be going really like down. Everything's like really bad. Uh, all the unemployment, all this and that. And then I think with punk rock, you do not tend to escape into a little world of your own because you're still reminded of all the bad things that are going on. But like being involved, like if you, if you're like someone into like. <laughs> When punk started in 76, 77, it was, the two, the two tenets of it was supposed to be, well, everything's what's so boring, let's make something a little bit exciting again, let's have a rock and roll that's exciting and, and a bit down to earth. And also, uh, a lot of those bands were also saying, well, look how bad the situation is for young people, look at the unemployment and things like that. People say that punk's outdated, well, I don't see how it can be, because now, 
everything got really boring again. You watch a couple of props, it's all full of rubbish, you know, it's all sort of android stuff that, or cocktail swigging poses. And you look at the unemployment, it's three million times, you know, the two million more people on the dole. It's, everything's got worse. The reasons for punk being are, are anything more, much more extreme now, much more urgent now than it ever was. So you don't just see it as, as, as mere sort of punk revivalism? No, it's a pretty sort of, you know, it, it means more than that, and it should do. It should, though, I mean, punk should mean... Punk should mean entertainment and it should mean rebellion and it should mean the two together. It should be protest and dance, you know, the two together. So, so I mean, when did you actually decide that punk was not dead? Years ago. It never died. Suppressed. The music people ignored that as another fashion. But it was, there's that many punks that they couldn't ignore it for long. Just the power of the music seemed really, really brilliant. It was just, it was, it was like there's none. No other like music like that. It, it, it could make you, you can go to a gig and you, you just you feel really really good. Yeah. For years, like the first two years, like we were called like uh, a fascist band. Like 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 it's really hard for us to get gigs because uh, used to be like supposed to camp bands and all that. Because it's just it's just us like dress what how you want. But it's not what you do we like being a Nazi or fuck all. But as soon as you as soon as you get labelled like uh, a fascist band. Or, and then F band, like nobody wants to know ya. Fascism is a load of crap, like most politics are. Here we come, America! Yes, we're on our way! Oh, I can't see how the hell they can ever put fascism with punk. Punk is freedom. Fascism is inflicting rule. Punk should be a totally individual thing. All right, so there's gangs of punks, but they're all totally individual people, their own beliefs. And they, they stand strong on their own. They don't need some dictatorship to tell them what to do. Someone called me Bondage because I used to wear a little suede miniskirt with bondage straps. So I'm getting Becky Bondage. Stop with Shirley Bondage. Well, yeah, well, that's just something everybody, isn't it? Yeah, I am. Well, I was very much at first, like the whip and all that was because blokes always dominated women, so I thought I'm going to dominate men instead. I was going to be a punk, but to me, punk is totally control, you know, envelopes everything. That's all it is to me.
suddenly a youth club can be followed out of boredom. You want to do something, you want to belong to something. In this society, it rejects you a lot. If you haven't got a job, you're rejected. So you've got to find a crowd to belong to, to, to feel someone, to be an individual. Punks can be range from office workers to dustbin men, to school kids. From the day you were born, you could be a punk, you know. It's just an attitude. You just got to have it how you have it. I mean, punk to me wasn't just there going out and disgusting people. It was having the fun, you know. That's what it all means. Still having a laugh now. You know, gigs, was, they were the high points, you know, going to gigs and enjoying yourself. The crowds are more appreciative now. They'll soon let you know if you're a crowd. Biggest wanker I've ever come across as a musician. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to sack you here and there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where'd you live, Cardiff? Uh, collect your train fare at the door. Thank you very much. Next. Next. Sacking geezers out of order. Useless. Worse than useless. Tell where you found him from. Incompetent amateur.
documentary, Jimi Hendrix the film, it did, which opens at the screen on the green in London on July 1st. Well, I think that uh, even since Captain Sensible's been at number one, we haven't seen any change in his behaviour. He's still the same old slob he ever was. He's done at the pubs and the clubs and he's still drinking at the bar with anyone who wants to drink with him. There's been no change of attitude in his part. He's even got the same phone number he always had. If it's going to mean anything, it's got to get across to a mass of people and, and get outside the sort of ghetto it's in now. And I think that some of the bands coming up now have got the, uh, have got the ability to do that. Who would you see? Which groups? I think uh, the business, the blitz, the addicts. I mean, uh, uh, bands of that calibre have got the have got the songs and they've got the sass to, to, to get across. I mean, it's still the same old principles. It's still having a laugh and having a say, that old cliche, but, you know, it, it still means something. been rebel rock and roll in one in one sense or another and I think that's what punk is a continuation of and as long as there's people who want to hear that sort of fast exciting rock music and as long as there's like things to protest about like the massive unemployment and the destruction of the off service and stuff like that then there's, there's gonna be a place for some sort of protest punk whether it calls itself something different or not it don't really matter 76 77 it was terribly fashionable to be punk rock or to be seen to be buying your clothes in the King's Road where they were selling bin liners for 20 quid a time. I think now it's, it's much more honest because it's unfashionable. Therefore you haven't got all those uh, people who were just there for the sake of the fashion. What you've got now are people who are genuinely involved in it, interested in it, love it. It's like a family atmosphere now. But I mean, how do you see the interrelationship between punks and spins? I mean, which definitely does seem to exist, although it almost seems that, that the media tries to put them against each other. Yeah, the media does, but I don't think it's working. The only difference I mean, they've got the same taste in music, and the only other difference I'm going to see is the way they dress. I mean, do you think the skins, the, the supposed bad reputation of the skins is deserved, or is it is, it, is that immediate thing? No, I mean, they're boisterous, but no more than anybody else. They know more boisterous than anybody else. I mean, the media likes, seems to, like a music that doesn't have anything to say. It doesn't tell them anything. It's just a tune they can hum to. You just... I'm um, so catching little chorus. 
And if he's got something to say, and most a lot of people don't really want to listen, listen to it. Since they know know it's there, they don't like being told it's there. The rest of feel uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Their music's about the, the real things that happen, yeah. real problems that do occur, not the ideal problems or the ideal world that these other groups sing about. Yeah, it's all very well to sing about getting down at the disco with your baby. What happens about the fight outside when you're coming home because some geezer, yeah. you know, you've looked at you. That's the real thing, but yeah. they don't sing about it, see? Yeah, I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds of discos in London that you can go to every night of the week. But for punk groups to play, or for somewhere where people can go to see punk groups, you've got, what, two nights a week, if you're lucky. I mean, it, it rules the airways, disco music. It rules the charts. We're just saying, we're not saying that smash, smash the disco's actually up. We're saying, for course, sakes, I'll give something else a listen. tell people how to run their lives. We're just trying to, you know, help people think for themselves on what we're saying. But how much do you think people listen to your lyrics? I mean, do you think they actually listen to it? I think they do, yeah. Yeah, the amount of kids that come up to us and talk about them, I mean, it's, it's that and the other, you know. There's a lot of things need to be done with society as a whole. We get the people to work together rather than against one another. Get a community spirit back. I think pretty good. How do you think you could do that? Just people working together. I mean, at our concerts we get all different sorts of people, not just skinheads, we get punks and, and just ordinary blokes. And then if they can all go out for an evening together and have a good time, then they can translate that onto a bigger scale and possibly make a better society as a whole. People automatically think, seem to think that skinheads cause trouble and problems. Yeah, all the time. But uh, most of the skinheads I know, they don't want to get nicked. They've always been harassed and that. But if someone sees a skinhead down the road, they usually stop, move over to the side that they cross the road. It's just what the papers write in the papers. People believe what's in the papers and what's on their telly. But you think people are intimidated because of the way skinheads look, like, especially when they're in a group together? Yeah, I suppose I am. 
I mean, you look quite hard, you know, I don't even know if you are, you know, but, fit, but just like to look at it, you look quite hard. I mean, I mean, does that sort of please you? Do you feel good that you look hard? I'm really bothered by it. Well, do you think skin's, but do you think that's good people do actually like to, to sort of look tough? Some people do like the uh, skin is about 14, 14, 15. They hang about with kids about 18, just to be big and shelf to their mates and that. You can always get scared. But it looks like I'm going to have to pick it up. So you've got no choice now, there's no turning back? No. I mean, do you think that in, in England things, that things will eventually turn to a violent solution? Do you think things will get violent in England? As yeah. well as during the riots? Yeah, I think they will. What's that? It's just that people are sort of all out against skinheads and punks and everything else that ain't normal. Well, Soul Boys, right? Uh, when there's the South End and that, it was them who were starting to travel because they come at us with deck chairs and that. People don't have to stand it and they think they're skinheads that's starting all the trouble. What have you been in the papers? Have you been talked about you and, and people you've been with before some problems? Yeah. But I mean, as far as like actual sort of politics in the country, I mean, I mean, that will get violent. Yeah, I think it will. Is that because of like, unemployment and everything like that? Well, the crime rate's gone up, isn't it? People have got to survive so they're going to crime. Do you think the government realises that? Yeah, they do, but they ain't doing nothing about it. So when did you get your first tattoo? I was, uh, 13. How old are you now? 18. Which, which, which was it, your first one? I don't know, that swallow. But, I mean, that broke... Mark Shane you go to, is he regarded as a professional to first in fact? He ain't got his shop in that, but he's, I suppose he is regarded as a professional. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you think that you changed, did it change your personality at all, having the tattoos done? Did it change you as a person? No. Yeah. I mean, are you, are you not worried about the ones on your face? Well, forget, forget they're there usually. It's just people when they remind me. What's how people react to you? Yeah, it's sort of walking down the street and everyone just stands there, stares at you. The people laughing and things like that. Most people cross the road if they see you. Did it definitely change the way people reacted to you then? Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, but I think people are intimidated by you, but this is a bit bad. Mm, it affects people differently. Some people, yes. Um, they get happy because they want to. Um, see themselves in a different light or or relate to other people in a different light but some people know they would consider it a, a very personal thing you know and something they just like to have what do you think to it Steve? Eh? what do you think to it? well the colours come out really well I saw them What do you think of it, Mark? Do you think it's one of your better pieces? Uh, um, it's come out quite well, considering he's got one healing. Yeah. This is the dungeon with the evil man, the people that press on the free again. Come out of the closet, come out of the hole, come out of the woodwork, come into the fold. Rebels are fighters, the license to kill. With the bandits, stop on the hill Open your windows, open your doors Open your minds to a freedom of thought From the rich man's cast, this revolution won't be the last.
No. What have you, what have you doing? Nothing. How long have you been doing nothing for? Past two years. <laughs> what, even during your non-punk periods? Yeah. Is it crucial for punk? No, I was, um, I was, I was at college for two years. Which college were you at? I was in Blackpool College for two years, doing A-levels. Did you get them? Of course I did. I'd go to university if I wanted to, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> well, you should. You get a grant. No, I, I get more on a doll. Don't you think that's socially irresponsible? I don't really care. <laughs> it's their problem if they want to give me £52 a week, they can, I don't care. Don't you work? No. Well, it gives us a job, because the way we look. Yeah? Is that, I mean, is that a fact? Yeah, that's a definite fact. What, what have people said to you? Just, uh, you're a state. We won't employ you looking like that. Change and we'll employ you and we won't change. What sort of jobs were those? Anything at all. I've got seven O levels and still won't give me a job. So... It's just because of the way you look. Oh, uh, in Italy, not many punks. Do you get given a hard time looking like that in Italy? Yeah. Did you look like that in Italy? No, it's not good in Italy. You ran away from the army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you ran away from the army? Yeah, but I stay here, I live here now. What would, ha <laughs> what would happen if you went back? <laughs> I like driving you back now. <laughs> what would happen well, if you went man. back? <laughs> what would happen if you went back to Italy? I ain't impossible to come back. Well, it's not possible for you to come no. back. Because I'm in prison. What, because of your back. parents? Or because you'd be arrested? Yeah. You'd be arrested? Yeah. What would they do to you? Hey? What would they do to you? Put me Put you in jail? Yeah, five years in jail. What do you do? What, so what do you do over here? I get a job. What, do you work now? No, I work maybe Tuesday. What do it? Cleaning the room in the hotel. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? What? Nothing. What was possible? Were you on the doll? Aye. Uh, How have you had your hair like that? Well... No, no, you. Did you get given a hard time? Yeah. Who, who, what sort of people give you a hard time for? Coppers and things like that, I don't like it. Yeah? And like, I've been in care all my life, and I think that's why I'm like I am now. Well, you've been in care? Yeah. Why was that? So I want to, I want, I want to do the things I wanted to do, and people wouldn't let me, so I got put in care. I think that's why I'm like this now, because I'm rebelling against everyone. The kids that think that you have to glue sniff to be a punk are just stupid. But when you say about glue sniffing, people always put it to the punks that the punks glue sniff. But it's not. I mean, when I was in care, this girl, right, she'd come in and you, you know, she looked really nice and all dressed up and everything. And I was talking away and she goes, uh, and they go, so there's a big group of she goes, they were asking who glue sniffed and who doesn't. They go, so do you sniff? And she goes, yeah. And they, we were really shocked that she sniffed right. And then they, I turn around, they turn to me and they go, do you sniff? And I goes, yeah. And they goes, oh, that's quite, that's not surprising, seeing as though you're a punk. Well, I mean, I don't think that punks necessarily do go sniff. I mean, I mean, by no means all the ones I've met do. But I mean, how many of your friends do it? Do you still do it? Yeah. Nearly all my mates sniff. Yeah? You know, I mean, people say to me, are oh, you going to kill yourself? But it's my life. And if I want to live like this, I will. I want to say to people who are reading what I'm saying about punk that it doesn't mean just dressing like the people whose record you buy dress it means thinking for yourself and actually like if you're a punk I mean, why aren't you playing in a band why aren't you writing your, your own fanzine why aren't you doing something i mean if if you feel upset about the system why aren't you going out and protesting about it why aren't you on the right to work march you know that's that's what punk means it means fighting back it don't mean sitting down like and getting stoned man and all that sort of stuff it don't mean that at all it means going bang we don't want this we're going to fight it or it means forming a band and saying or uh, having a good time you know it's, it's you've got to do something it's not enough punk isn't about being a passive consumer Now, and I think there's, there's ever been independent charts. You have a look, you know, and it's, it's got more kind of 
it's changed a lot because it's more, it's all to be fast and loud and hardcore now, you know. But which probably change again, it'll probably get back to what it used to be, like in 77, you know. Just there, just because it's a music fashion, it's got something to say. That's what it started out as, it always will be the same like that. Well, do you think that original spirit is still there? It isn't just yeah, of course it is, it's still there, yeah. I mean, why would people yeah. form punk bands? It's not a fashion. Punk's not a fashion. It's a well, cult. Yeah, if punk, was, if punk was a fashion, punk would be dead. It's a cult figure. You change to futurist band, you know. But if you believe in what you're doing, you'll stay a punk. Band. Well, I got into punk in, in the same way as anybody else in 1976-77, going to gigs, being one of the, the punters. When I started working Melody Maker two years ago, I was working with all different types of bands, a little bit of everything really, and I find always that the punk bands were the most sincere, the most determined, and the most cooperative people that I worked with. That's really what... Um, made me decide to specialise in punk music. So you empathise with it a lot more? Than certainly, that, certainly, yes. Movements that have come along. Certainly. And there's, a, there's a family atmosphere about punk rock which is wonderful. You can be accepted at any level in it. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're into the bands and you're into the music, nobody cares. I mean, how, how, how different do you think it's been from all these other tribal divisions that have emerged over the last couple of years, like Rockabilly or Jazz mm. Funk or whatever? Well, maybe I'm not too qualified to talk about that, but I think maybe some of those have been contrived, whereas punk has, has thrived and survived through some of the hardest times that any movement has ever had. It's still there. It's bigger than it ever was. It seems to me a way of life and not a movement. It doesn't seem like a tribal division to me. It seems like a way of life.
called What About Future? Well, in London, the punks and the skins fight all the time, but you go some, you go to Manchester, and they, 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 everyone gets together. There's no trouble at all. We're collecting for the morning and the end. Oh, 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 if people fight against you, and they're in front against you, if people hit you, no matter what they are, what shape they are, what head they are. It seems everyone's at each other's throats all the time, isn't it? The old football thing, taken to the, just another phase. None of us hate each other. I don't hate any of you. <laughs> Is that actually plastic, that bit? What bit? Top, and bits on top. No, they're not. But you don't knock them every day. No, no, they're like, they say like that. They're practically the same when I wake up. All I do yeah. is rearrange them into a um, reasonably uh, stupid it. formation. <laughs> Something that will make the people laugh. Does it pick up radio waves? Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it lacking? Transmits it its own signal. Package, yeah. yeah. We put all kinds of shit in there. What's the best lacquer? It's not lacquer, it's soap. What sort of soap? How, how do you do it? Get lots of soap in your hand and you go. Well, cake, like that. soap suds. No, you, you just. Soap. Yeah, you get. Hang on. A bit like that, right? <laughs> and you, you <laughs> dunk into the water and you go. Slob it on, and then you go. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> and you pull them up. <laughs> and you slam it all over the place, generally. Do you think it's healthy for the hair? Oh, it's undoubtedly unhealthy for the hair. Because every time you wash it, once every six months or whatever, it falls out. So I've got less and less. That that's radiation that poisoning. Fact, no, that's that radiation poisoning. That is. Oh. I came in there. You have to be careful, actually. There's probably a few power stations, nuclear power stations in there. Yeah, it's something to do with that. It's something to do with the soap as well. But it does. It makes all your hair fall out. You don't try it. Is, is there a dandruff problem? Uh, yes. Well, not too bad. Not, no, not too bad. Right? Nah. This side is worse. That's awful, that side, yeah. How much is in that? Yeah, five, five gallons. So what's that? Five Chuck's eight, glass over glass. Yeah. Oh, I'll get some. Yeah, get some glass. You'll like glass. Get those in cups and that. God, that must look a bit... Uh, well, done yeah. some, how's your father, isn't it? Oh, oh no. I've got a hangover. Should we get a bowl? Yeah, yeah you better get a bowl. We're going to get a bowl. We haven't got a bowl here anymore, though. Saucepan. on meat hooks. What's it like? Yeah, <laughs> Rotting <laughs> flesh in a rostrum. The top's the best. What's the bit at the, 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 the top? Yeah, I haven't seen. Oh, I'm the member of the eye hunt to my crap. I can't read what it says. I can read, can't read what it says. <laughs> I'll read it to you. It says, uh, I'm a member of the I humped my grand gang. <laughs> and uh, it's got bang in brackets. So you put that in there. So you're a heritage band with the job. Oh no, I did all this. Did you? Yeah. 
I inherited it. Yeah. And it's a bit smellier. You yeah. inherited it? Yeah, I, oh, I did a burglary uh, on a house not very long ago, well, a couple of months ago, when I was really drunk, a bad one. And I left this jacket in the house, and that's how I got caught. On. <laughs> <laughs> it's been rotting in a police station in a plastic bag for about the last three months. <laughs> <laughs> so what, are you on bail? Yeah, uh, no, I'm on probation, so you probation uh, order. Well, they didn't send you down again, no, I was so surprised. I thought I was going to get down for about six months or something. But, uh, I was lucky, really. But um, I haven't been seeing my probation officer lately, and uh, she says to me that um, if I miss one more time seeing her again, that uh, she's going to recommend a custodial sentence. How old are you? 19. What? I mean, does this thing, is this thing, sort of thing likely to happen when you're pissed? Well, no, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> not anymore, so. Did you actually make anything? Yeah. Well, you only have two. Uh, no, video recorder, stack stereo system, bo- about eight bottles of liqueurs, bottles of whiskey spirits, um, video cassettes, tape deck, uh, jelly moulds, <laughs> packets of jelly. <laughs> All sorts of bad things. We left, a, we left a trail of all the, st- all the stuff that we stole because it was up in these woods in Nails Ear, a little town just outside Bristol. And uh, we left a trail of everything that we stole and all the way down to our hideout. And uh, they had uh, police sniffer dogs up there. And apparently the dogs were going like that. So one of us were drunk. It's a bit and you left your jacket as well. Yeah. A bad one. Organised crime. <laughs> I don't really know one, no one, one, and uh, I moved into this flat with this girl called Laura down at Albany Road in St Paul's, and uh, I'd, I sort of lived in a, a room on the floor for about a month or so, and uh, she moved out, and I had a room to myself, but it was so depressing then, I was sat there for about, well, every <coughs> single night, because I didn't know anyone in Bristol, I sat there every single night, with my bottle of five pints milk, <coughs> and now again having a couple of spoonfuls on it, reading the same book over and over again about 30 times. In the end, I got into what such a club, 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 reading that over and over again. And in the end, I got to sort of such a state of depression that I slashed my wrists up and all that. But it seemed like a good idea. I think it was just to get attention to myself, really, at the time, you know. So I thought, this is living. So I thought, right, I'm off. So I left my bed sit, sold all my belongings, and just moved into a squat. And it I've just been squatting around with them and all that. And then uh, Amoeba to moved up with us. Well, I moved to Bristol about two years ago when we were living in a squat around the West Grove. And, uh, one of the people from our squad met them, brought them back. And ever since then, we've just been sort of living together, falling over together, <laughs> having a good laugh, generally. Yeah, it's generally having a good laugh, right? Yeah. Living it up.
to an extent, we're very lucky, right? Because for some reason, people like us. Well, God knows why. I, I've no idea why they like us. But as long as they continue to like us, or, or a certain amount of people continue to like us and buy our records, I'm, I'm sure there'll be every reason for this band to continue. Because, like, you know what I mean? It's better than working, isn't it? <laughs> the reason people still like us is probably because we, we've been, like, turned over, ripped off, had all the cash stolen, which we've made it very public as well that this goes on. And I think our audience sort of believe us, and if you, like, relate to it, because they're as skint as we are. You know, and, and they see us in the pub, and they see we don't have, like, huge wads of notes and arrive in limousines. And I think they can relate to us. Well, I'd relate to us if I was, a, you know, I would, Joe yeah. Normal. I'd love it, damn. I'd try and get a job in the dam if I wasn't in it. <laughs> Listen, punk bought me this beer, so who gives a shit? <laughs> wake up and live, don't mind the rainy pattern, and you will find it's mind over matter. Dark clouds will break up if you will wake up and see that it's ha ha ho ho Wake up and live, show the stuff you're made of, just follow through. What are you afraid of? You'll try it, won't you? Say, why don't you wake up and live? Wake up and live, come out of your shell. Hey, fella, find your place in the sun, come out of your shell. Say, fella, just be a go get the son of a gun. Whoa, wake up and live. If Lady Luck is yawning up on your toes, a better day is dawning. Don't let up, get up, and yeah, you gotta give. Give yourself a shake up. Yeah, you gotta wake up. Wake up and live. Celebration of punk rock. Uh, it's obviously like a major, uh, had a major effect on the youth of 1977 and 76, 77 and onwards. And I think it's just uh, people coming together from all, all walks, all countries, all getting back together, just showing that the spirit's still alive and the interest is still there, which I think has proved easily far above the expectations I think they never said. <laughs> Oh, 
punk is um, just an attitude that I was looking for to share with other people when I answered the advert that says punk. It's an attitude that you can embrace and just go out. And, uh, yeah, basically, live your dreams, <laughs> whatever they are. For me, it, being an indie punk is, means fucking pers personal freedom and uh, doing whatever I want to fucking do, you know? And making me realise that there's more to fucking life than a boxy job and a wife and kids and all that shit. I just don't need it, I don't want it. So, it's changed my fucking attitude to what life in the world's all about, you know?
know, to, the, to wherever you're going. As long as you're a decent person and you'll find other decent people out there. You, you can't tell me that you can just walk up to any like straight guy in the street and say, look, geezer, I'm stuck, because you'll probably up for another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, mate, yeah. <laughs> See ya. Worst thing they come out is all that, isn't it? <laughs> Shape with the, you know, just hundreds of remotes here. Uh, spare ten pence. <laughs> Fuck off. I suppose the main way that people first got the first taste of punk or first exposure to it was uh, solely through image. It was so, um, small, um, a group of people who were first involved in it that it, it wouldn't have had even uh, an effect even if they'd told their best friends and their best friends had told them. So mainly people just read about it in the papers and they made up their own minds about it. So I suppose it, 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 it became successful and actually its inevitable decline and, and transmutation was all due to different images. Society in general is going to find it very hard to accept people with pierced orifices all over the place and the Mohicans. Um, and the, whether they were American or English, I think they'd be accept, uh, treat, received in exactly the same way in this this country. So I think the ones that have been more successful have been the bands that moved away from the uh, hardcore stereotype punk image. Yeah.